absolutely. you know, so that's, absolutely. that's one of those things, you know, that people have to understand, you know, it takes time, you know, there are levels. Time. Yeah, oh, levels, there, definitely. There levels. Like I, I think one of one of the most eye-opening experience, and I actually talk about this experience quite a bit. Um, and and I I one of the most eye-opening grappling experiences I ever had was in 2017 at MMA Masters down here in Miami, Florida. And uh uh with um oh my goodness, uh Oh my goodness! How am I? I would I never forget this guy's name until just now. Until um, now, right? <laughs> right. So just now, uh, I'm gonna remember it. I'll message you it. Uh, yeah. But this guy, and I'm seeing him now a lot because you know Colby Covington trains there, uh, so he's always in his corner. Um, but this guy, God, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Anyways, uh, this guy, I at that time, you know. I, I've been doing jujitsu forever already. He's a pretty decent grappler. And I was going, you know, tap for tap with his black belts. And, you know, we were having great roles. And he's like, hey, come roll with me, man. And I was like, oh, for sure. You know, you know, and this guy in a three minute round subbed me like six or seven times at will. And I was like, what the hell? And I had just got back. We didn't talk about it. I spent, you know, quite, quite some time in the military. And uh, I had just come back home from a deployment. I was super in shape. I was jacked. I mean, like strong, stronger than I'd ever been before yep. in great, great shape and stamina and wise and things like stamina, that, you know? strength, knowledge. I, I felt great. And like, and I don't get me wrong. I didn't expect to beat this guy by any means. Uh, but, but you but thought I you thought, was going to be able to hold you the least hold your own, right? I thought he was going to like, look at me and be like, Oh man, this guy can roll. This guy beat my ass seven ways from Sunday. And <laughs> I could not believe what was happening to me. Like, I remember at one time, like I felt like I was in a trash compactor in this guy's guard and I was so strong and I was trying to like bridge up and just, Nope. And just like closed me down. Yep. And I was like, what is happening right now? Um, now let me ask that you was, this: Was yeah. it because you know that where that that's where it shows knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Because he knew exactly where to put his hands, you know, keep his guard at a certain thing, and it, you know, is that where knowledge comes in, and that where you know you have to keep progressing in something? I mean, because obviously you was a good, uh, you know, <clears throat> ground fighter and things like that, mm -hmm. but it was is that where knowledge comes in? Yeah, big time. It, it's an experience thing for sure. And just knowing like different, like, it's like just knowing leverage. It's like when you're boxing with someone and you're, and like, you're playing this like hand game of like touch, yep. touch, touch. And like the guy that you're playing that like hand game doesn't realize that you putting your hand on top of their hand isn't so much to gauge the distance, but also to like wear out the top of the shoulder. It's yep. just like little things like that, uh, you know, where people don't like, it's very high level. It's, yeah. it's, it's high level to understand. Or don't tense your shoulders up when you're, when you're, you know, when you're yeah, it's, boxing. I was it, just, I was yeah. just explaining that to somebody just this past Saturday after a sparring class. I was like, Hey man, like you're too tense. I was like to strike, you have to be loose. You have to be fluid. I was like, I'm you, if you watch me punch a bag, hit mitts, fight, spar, whatever, you'll never see me tensed up here throwing my punch. For one, it's slower, and for two, it's a big waste of energy, and yep. it doesn't hit, and I don't hit any harder when nope. I start the power and the tensing back here. I was like, all of my you know stuff is loose fluid until I get within right here, and then boom, snap. It's yep. a twist, a close, a turn of the hand, and like I was like, and you know what? I don't hit ridiculously hard, but yep. I... I make a lot of contact. I'm, yeah. I'm uh, you know, like in, and I'm fast. So it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily like, I'm not going to go up to one of the punch machines and break the record on it, yeah. but I suck but at I'll, one of those. <laughs> Seriously. Me and my wife was at like one of these things called uh, round one. It's bowling and they have arcade mm -hmm. games and they have one there. And uh, I was watching uh, this group of kids, you know, they was, you know, teenagers, at least old enough to drive. And uh, this one kid, man, was just knocking it. And it was going to like 850, you know, 900. And I went over there and the kid was, he stopped and he wanted to see, you know, six foot five, you know, 400 something pound sure. man. I hit that thing and maybe got past five, 500, <laughs> like, because yeah. then I touched it and I'm like, why is this thing like so soft and things like soft, that? Yep. Yeah. You got to hit it right. And yeah, yeah. It, you, you know, know it, you take me to a gym 
you know, take me over to my gym, kick, I can fold a, a tie bag in half, you know, mm. I can sit there and just whack it. But um, let's move on a little bit to um, what was your, what was your MMA, uh, what was your MMA, not record, but how was that transition? How about that? Hey, how was your transition from, you know, just practicing, you know, uh, rolling at the gym, you know, doing your kickboxing or was you already doing, you was doing kickboxing before your MMA, correct? Correct. Yep. And my first fight, my first full contact fight was actually a kickboxing fight. Um, okay. yeah, the majority of the majority of my amateur fights. And when I say the majority, I mean like 90% of my amateur fights, uh, were like, well, considered smoker fights and you may or may not okay. be familiar with those, yeah. but you, yeah. you show up and you know, you weigh in three hours later, you're fighting. Um, yeah. and a lot of that happened in like Lansing, Illinois. Um, and the reason for that is because back when I was an amateur, um, there wasn't there weren't sanctions everywhere for amateur fights. So even a lot of like the amateur MMA fights, there were just no sanctions. There's no real, you know, there's no real record, you know, for, for anybody. It was, it was like the wild West. It was the end of those like days. Cause at the bar days, it was at the end of the bar days because I mean, (laughs) yeah, I remember just bar bar fights. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They set up a cage in the middle of the bar. Yep. fought at a strip club like it's just like all sorts of stuff yeah it's like um i'm serious like uh, that's how babes it was and, babes and brawl they have fights at strip clubs and stuff like that and uh yeah you know um, outside ring rings outside. outside i fought outside you know like plenty of times yeah uh two of my mixed martial arts fights were um outside rings and one time it was actually yeah two of them actually one time it was was super hot and one time it was freezing cold and you know, like I remember, like you, you spend all that time in the back getting warm, and next thing you know, you know, you're like you're, come, you're stepping outside, you take your shirt off, and it's nighttime, and and you're just like, Whew, like yeah. it's brisk out, you know, it's cold out here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, can I no fight doubt. in my hoodie? Um, yeah, right. I was funny thing. I was walking out wearing a, like a hoodie with my shirt over it for my gym, and yeah, I was in 2011. Um, yeah. So, uh, but getting back to like the question was, yeah the the transition was i was it was it was natural you know i started doing the competitive kickboxing and then got into uh you know mma and like the actual make i was already training mma um and kind of doing the kickboxing to warm up to mma and i did amateur boxing as well um i had five amateur boxing fights and i'm um, still smoker style but yeah uh the the whole concept back then was uh, my coach and the coaches through the years that I had, they said it's best to have uh, experience in boxing, MMA, and kickboxing because the crowds are different. What's expected is different. Um, yeah. and the styles are different. And and now as a professional, I've done pro kickboxing, pro Muay Thai technically, and then also pro MMA. Um, okay. So I've not gotten into pro boxing, and I feel like I will never get into pro boxing. Um, the reason Would for you that ever- is because – would you ever do the bare knuckle, you know, uh, fighting championship? You know what? Or... I don't know. I, here's, here's what I have to say about that. I like, I still work a corporate job and, <laughs> and I, so I have a couple friends who do bare knuckle fighting. Um, my friend, Tom Schauf, who's a really good friend and former teammate of mine. Um, he's pretty big in the bare knuckle um, world right now. And then uh, my boy, Mike Richmond, who's fighting really soon here. He's a good friend from Minnesota. Um, he's up, he's, he's the 185 pound bare knuckle champ. He's fighting, uh, I forget that, that dude's name, um, that he's, they're fighting for like the 205 strap though. Okay. He's a good friend, um, and in Minnesota and, um, my, my buddy, uh, George Gonzalez, he fights for bare knuckle, uh, championship. So I've got some friends in there and I know some people, uh, just recently I was at the karate combat 37 event in Orlando. Oh, and, very good. Uh, yeah it was it was super cool and uh i was in the vip section and uh myself and uh oh my goodness i'm terrible with names today uh mike uh oh my, mike perry mike perry and i we we talked for like close to 45 minutes that's that dude's a, he's a cool dude he's so much different than what the media portrays and you know yeah. like i grew all up of them I grew, all of them yeah and so just what a cool guy and and it's that like 
yeah, so me and him had a really good conversation. And um, I think that for me to get into bare knuckle, I'd have to give up what I'm doing on the civilian side because from I know totally, guys yeah. who have done I know guys who have done mixed martial arts, boxing, the whole nines, and myself included, I've got a relatively clean look still. But all my friends who get into like bare knuckle, their the faces get scarred up and yep. like it's like, hey, this is a one this is a one hundred percent like you know, m- all of my checks moving forward need to be from here <laughs> yeah. or somewhere where no one sees my face afterwards. Not because, you know, the, it's just because like I could never go. I don't think you could ever go back to like a corporate job after yeah. doing something like that. With What kind of line of work do you do now? now? I sell of... diesel. I sell oh, diesel okay. for, yeah, for pilot flying J. Oh, okay. 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 Yep. Yeah. I love flying J's. Uh, I wish they had yep. more of them around here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for that side break you know i'm like oh no, man right. i love me some fried <laughs> all right <laughs> me and my yeah, brother used to yeah yeah i was great gonna pizza. say that or like uh there's one uh in fort pierce florida me and my yeah. brother used to go up there, uh, yep. yeah we used to go up there on sundays for the uh the buffet because it was just good <laughs> and mm, the breakfast yeah, you know, that, it was delicious <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> love to love to hear that yeah. love to hear that yep <laughs> oh, look at this we're going from fighting to uh, uh gas stations <laughs> that's all right <laughs> that's all right no so you were sitting there saying that yeah uh, <clears throat> you probably wouldn't get into boxing uh you know before yeah, Ash and bare knuckle the i no, you know what i it's hard to say i i would be i think because of all my experience uh you know, growing up fighting on the street and then all of my experience that I have from bouncing at clubs and stuff, I'd probably be a better bare knuckle boxer than I would an actual boxer, professional boxer. And the reason I says I, I was a decent amateur boxer and I've got great hands for what it is to be a kickboxer. Most people are like, dude, your hands are phenomenal. Uh, but like boxing in and of itself is a pure sport, you know, it, it it it's but it's just a different style of fighting it's its own thing you, yeah it's its, own, it's thing. its own thing and once once you start getting into like hey just the movement and you know it's like so much of what you know you have to unlearn and i and i have good enough boxing where i can go get some like work in with some pros and like and you know learn some stuff but i'm not i'm not in there to go box and beat yeah. any professional boxers at boxing i mean if they want to fight you can fight I'll fight yeah. anybody, you know, but like, uh, yeah, for just pure pro boxing, it's just not, not now, for me. Now, Ruben, let me ask you this. Um, <clears throat> would you, uh, because are you, are you a black belt Yep. in karate? Okay. So yep. you would be, I mean, it, I, cause I've had, uh, Gabriel Vaga on here. Um, uh, sure. uh, here I go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bruno, uh, I forget Souza on there i've had a lot oh, of so, yeah. Com- yeah i've had a lot of karate combat guys on here mm-hmm. and uh, they said usually you know yes you have to have a black belt unless if you're like a big name you know right like they, like they, erickson samuel he's a taekwondo you know, they, black belt who yeah. i've been calling out and i'll send you the messages i've been <laughs> I, i'll send you the messages that i sent him i've sent the owner robert Bryan of karate combat i've sent now to this guy andres uh T- tomas greer who's actually super too cool guy um he's out there in athens right now i think he just competed i think he's on like the puerto rican national uh, okay. or the puerto rican team he's phenomenal yeah. uh and i've been talking with him for over two years yeah. about and so on my last deployment i was on uh i was i was gone for just short of a year in africa and this was 2020 to 2021 I started coming across this Erickson Samuel guy on Instagram <laughs> and I, I I've made some TikTok videos posted on Twitter. I get out the president of karate combat all the time. I'm like, Hey, don't hide this guy from me. Like, yeah. so, and so here, here's the deal. I, I started coming across this guy's stuff on social media and he's a phenomenal martial artist. I think he's, I think he's, he's fast. He's strong, works hard. And I was like, man, this guy's, awesome and as a as a competitor i was like man i would love to like test myself and see you like where i rank against something like something like this from a completely respectful yes. place yeah. and 